One of the keys to effectiveness in the world of work is your ability to communicate effectively. You spend as much as 75% of your time communicating and interacting with other people. There are two forms of communication. The first form is the way you talk to yourself, and dialogue with yourself, and think and plan to yourself. The other form of communication is the way you interact with others. Learning how to communicate effectively is a learned skill, and you can get better and better at it by learning what the best communicators do, and practicing it until it becomes a regular part of your repertoire. Number 1. There are three elements to any conversation. Words only account for 7% of the message. When you talk, people will forget most of what you say, but they will remember the way you said it, the tone of voice. The mere tone of your voice accounts for fully 38.8% of your message. When you want to sound friendly, warm, reassuring, intimate, or caring when you speak, keep your voice in the lower range where the deeper sounds are. Also, remind yourself to slow down. It's very difficult to be close, friendly, warm, or thoughtful when you're speaking too quickly. Body language accounts for fully 55% of your communication. The very best message is a message that is synchronized, where the words, the tone of voice, and the body are all synchronized to the message. That's why when somebody talks to you, it's important you turn toward them and face them directly. And when you talk to them, listen closely to what they say, nod, and pay attention. Number two, there are three parts of any conversation. The first part of the conversation, ethos, has to do with the character of the person. A person with high character can say little and be enormously influential. The second part, pathos, means connecting with emotions. We connect with emotions when we tune in and focus on the person and their problems and their needs. The third part, logos, is the factual content of the conversation. In selling, you establish rapport, which is the character. You seek the underlying problem or need, which is connecting with emotions, and only then do you talk about your product or service, which is the logos. Number three. There are four basic personality styles. The first is relators. They are quiet, self-contained, not particularly expressive, sensitive, people-oriented, and concerned about other people's opinions. The second is analyzers, who are more concerned about doing the job and are more inward-directed. The third is directors, who are most concerned with getting results and cutting to the chase. The fourth is expressives, or socializers. They are outgoing, direct, valuable, and very people-oriented. Number four is a balanced dialogue. In the ideal conversation, each person will get a chance to talk, and each person will get a chance to listen. The key is to have about a 10% to 15% period of easy silences, comfortable silences. Each of us has needs like vitamins and minerals. Some need to talk, and some need to listen. However, some people need to talk 70% of the time, and the other person needs to talk 70% of the time, causing clashes. The key is to find a balance where each person gets to talk and listen. Number five is the key to communication. Question for clarification. If you have any doubt at all, ask, how do you mean? Or, how do you mean exactly? Then just pause and wait. Follow up with other open-ended questions and keep the conversation rolling along. Number six is to acknowledge and agree. Good conversationalists are active conversationalists. They're not sitting there passively. Active listening is very important. Put down the magazine or newspaper, turn off the television set, lean in, and be there the whole time. Number seven is to listen attentively. When you listen, the other person's feeling of personal value increases. You can actually make another person feel terrific about themselves by listening in a warm, genuine, caring way to everything they have to say. Number eight is to paraphrase the speaker's words in your own words. By paraphrasing, you demonstrate in no uncertain terms that you are genuinely paying attention and making every effort to understand their thoughts or feelings. Number nine is to pause before replying. When you pause, you avoid the risk of interrupting, show that you are giving careful consideration to their words, and actually hear the other person better. Lastly, if you want to make yourself articulate, not only should you read, but you should write down what you think. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And remember, the conversation you are most resistant to is the conversation you most need to have. Speak up and share your truth respectfully and with love. One of the keys to effectiveness in the world of work is your ability to communicate effectively. You spend as much as 75% of your time communicating and interacting with other people. 
There are two forms of communication. The first form is the way you talk to yourself, and dialogue with yourself, and think and plan to yourself. The other form of communication is the way you interact with others. Learning how to communicate effectively is a learned skill, and you can get better and better at it by learning what the best communicators do, and practicing it until it becomes a regular part of your repertoire. Number 1. There are three elements to any conversation. Words only account for 7% of the message. When you talk, people will forget most of what you say, but they will remember the way you said it, the tone of voice. The mere tone of your voice accounts for fully 38.8% of your message. When you want to sound friendly, warm, reassuring, intimate, or caring when you speak, keep your voice in the lower range where the deeper sounds are. Also, remind yourself to slow down. It's very difficult to be close, friendly, warm, or thoughtful when you're speaking too quickly. Body language accounts for fully 55% of your communication. The very best message is a message that is synchronized, where the words, the tone of voice, and the body are all synchronized to the message. That's why when somebody talks to you, it's important you turn toward them and face them directly. And when you talk to them, listen closely to what they say, nod, and pay attention. Number two, there are three parts of any conversation. The first part of the conversation, ethos, has to do with the character of the person. A person with high character can say little and be enormously influential. The second part, pathos, means connecting with emotions. We connect with emotions when we tune in and focus on the person and their problems and their needs. The third part, logos, is the factual content of the conversation. In selling, you establish rapport, which is the character. You seek the underlying problem or need, which is connecting with emotions, and only then do you talk about your product or service, which is the logos. Number three, there are four basic personality styles. The first is relators. They are quiet, self-contained, not particularly expressive, sensitive, people-oriented, and concerned about other people's opinions. The second is analyzers, who are more concerned about doing the job and are more inward-directed. The third is directors, who are most concerned with getting results and cutting to the chase. The fourth is expressives, or socializers. They are outgoing, direct, valuable, and very people-oriented. Number four is a balanced dialogue. In the ideal conversation, each person will get a chance to talk, and each person will get a chance to listen. The key is to have about a 10% to 15% period of easy silences, comfortable silences. Each of us has needs like vitamins and minerals. Some need to talk, and some need to listen. However, some people need to talk 70% of the time, and the other person needs to talk 70% of the time, causing clashes. The key is to find a balance where each person gets to talk and listen. Number five is the key to communication. Question for clarification. If you have any doubt at all, ask, how do you mean? Or, how do you mean exactly? Then just pause and wait. Follow up with other open-ended questions and keep the conversation rolling along. Number six is to acknowledge and agree. Good conversationalists are active conversationalists. They're not sitting there passively. Active listening is very important. Put down the magazine or newspaper, turn off the television set, lean in, and be there the whole time. Number seven is to listen attentively. When you listen, the other person's feeling of personal value increases. You can actually make another person feel terrific about themselves by listening in a warm, genuine, caring way to everything they have to say. Number eight is to paraphrase the speaker's words in your own words. By paraphrasing, you demonstrate in no uncertain terms that you are genuinely paying attention and making every effort to understand their thoughts or feelings. Number nine is to pause before replying. When you pause, you avoid the risk of interrupting, show that you are giving careful consideration to their words, and actually hear the other person better. Lastly, if you want to make yourself articulate, not only should you read, but you should write down what you think. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And remember, the conversation you are most resistant to is the conversation you most need to have. Speak up and share your truth respectfully and with love. Today we delve into the enigmas of human achievement and unlock the gates to boundless empowerment. Nestled within the fabric of our daily routines lies a singular habit, a habit so potent it has the power to bestow upon you a mantle of greatness. Amidst the hustle and bustle of our modern lives, there exists a subtle yet profound force 
a habit that when cultivated with diligence and intention, can elevate you to heights beyond your wildest dreams. It is not the grand gestures or momentous acts that define our success, but rather the daily rituals, the habits that shape our destiny. And within the realm of habit lies a treasure trove of untapped potential waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to seek it. It is the habit of setting audacious goals and pursuing them with unwavering determination. It is the habit of seizing each day as an opportunity for growth, of embracing challenges as stepping stones to success. Consider, if you will, the lives of history's greatest achievers, the titans of industry, the visionaries, the trailblazers. What set them apart from the masses was not merely talent or luck, but a steadfast commitment to their craft, a dedication to mastery that propelled them to greatness. They understood that success is not a destination, but a journey. A journey marked by the daily cultivation of habits that lead to excellence. For just as a single drop of water has the power to carve through stone, so too does the habit of self-improvement have the power to shape your destiny. Together, let us embark on this noble quest, and may we emerge victorious, powerful beyond belief. Earl Nightingale, in his inspiring program, The Strangest Secret, posits that what you think, over time, becomes your reality. This idea, also expressed by Ralph Waldo Emerson, highlights that you become what you predominantly occupy in your thoughts. The law of the mind, according to Nightingale, is extremely powerful and serves as a fundamental law to explain many others. Addressing the action of the mind, its natural extension is the third law of success, known as the law of mental equivalence. This law holds that your primary responsibility to yourself is to create a clear and accurate mental representation of what you wish to experience in every aspect of your external life. If you seek happiness, you need to clearly define what that means for you and build an exact mental picture of that happiness. The same applies if you yearn for good health, satisfying relationships, or financial prosperity. You must create in your mind a detailed image of those desires. Nightingale argues that this process is the crucial starting point that invariably leads to the realization of your dreams and goals. The fourth law of success, as explained by Nightingale, is the law of correspondence, a notion that has been discussed for millennia and explains human experience. This law states that what is within is reflected without. Your external life is an almost exact reflection of what is happening in your mind, both at the conscious and subconscious levels. This law of correspondence also holds that your external world of material achievements will correspond exactly to your inner world of readiness. The more knowledge and skill you acquire to be more effective in your work, the more you will be paid. You cannot expect to acquire or achieve something outwardly until you have acquired or achieved it inwardly. The law of correspondence reigns supremely. It operates constantly in various areas. First, in your attitude. How others perceive and treat you reflects your internal attitude. Second, in your relationships, these reflect your attitude and personality. If you are a positive person, you will have positive relationships. By becoming more patient and loving, your relationships will change immediately, like a mirror. The third area where the law of correspondence operates is in health. According to Nightingale, much of your health is directly linked to specific attitudes that can cause anything from minor illnesses to serious conditions. Holistic medicine suggests that there are corresponding mental attitudes for most common ailments, from colds to serious illnesses. In summary, according to Nightingale, the law of correspondence establishes that your external world reflects your internal world, and understanding and working with these mental laws are essential to achieving your dreams and goals. The fifth law of success is the law of belief which states that what you believe with emotion becomes your reality. You always tend to act consistently with your deepest beliefs. Your beliefs act as a filter or screen that edits incoming information and only allows into your conscious awareness those things that you have already decided are true about yourself and the world. As William James of Harvard said, belief creates the actual fact. In the Bible, it is said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For example, if you absolutely believe that you are destined to achieve great success in life and that nothing can stop you from reaching the greatness that is rightfully yours, you will act consistently with that belief and eventually make it a reality. If you doubt your ability to succeed for some reason, this negative belief will manifest in your tendency to hold yourself back. The most important part of the law of belief is the need to question your own limiting beliefs. 
These are the beliefs that act as brakes on your potential, the persistent doubts and fears that people have about themselves and their abilities, which lead them to settle. When you have limiting beliefs, you tend to settle for much less than you are capable of. To embark on the path to extraordinary success, we must first confront these limiting beliefs head on. We must dare to question their validity, to shine a light on the falsehoods that hold us back from realizing our dreams. And what better way to do so than to seek the wisdom of those who know us best? Ask them, my friends. Ask them what limiting beliefs they perceive in you. For often it is through the eyes of others that we gain clarity on our own limitations. But remember that limiting beliefs are but mere illusions, smoke and mirrors that cloud our judgment and hinder our progress. Test them against the light of truth. Ask yourselves, have others with similar limitations achieved the success we desire? And as you ponder this question, reflect on your actions, for it is in your deeds, not your words, that your true values and beliefs are revealed. There is much confusion and unhappiness in the world today, because many people feel that if they say something emphatically enough or write it down, it means they really believe it. But this is false. You only truly believe in what you do. Your actions speak much louder than your words. For example, if you truly believe in the values of persistence and dedication, in the things you do every day, if you truly believe in the values of honesty, integrity, and self-discipline, you will demonstrate these qualities in each of your behaviors. In fact, you can determine a person's values by observing what they did in the past when the pressure was on. Only when you are forced to make a decision is when you know what you truly value. The wonderful and important thing about your values is that you can develop them in yourself by disciplining yourself to act consistently with them, even if you haven't yet made them a fixed part of your character. The seventh law of success is the law of motivation, which says that everything you do is triggered by internal desires, impulses, and instincts, many of which may be at an unconscious level. Your attitudes and behaviors will be determined by your dominant motivations, by what you really want and need in life, not by what you think you want. This is an extension of the law of values, and it is very important that you understand it. There is a simple formula called the ABC formula of human motivation and human action. The ABC acronym stands for antecedents, behavior, and consequence. Antecedents are the things that happen before behavior. Behavior is the things you do, and consequences are what happens as a result of your behavior. We know that psychologically, only about 15% of your motivation comes from antecedents, from what you read, learn, or are told to do or not do. You see, a staggering 85% of your motivation stems from the expectations you hold, the beliefs you harbor about the future that awaits you. The clearer you paint the picture of your desired future, the more vividly you envision the consequences of your actions, the stronger your motivation becomes. Clarity is not a luxury, it is a necessity. It is the cornerstone upon which success is built. For without absolute clarity about your goals, about the outcomes you seek to achieve in every facet of your life, your motivation wanes, your efforts falter. Now let's talk about the ABC formula, a simple yet profound concept that holds the key to understanding motivation and behavior. It's a simple equation. Action begets consequence. But here's the twist. It's not just your actions that shape your reality, it's also your inactions. Yes, my friends, even the decision to do nothing carries with it a consequence. What you do, as well as what you fail to do, will have consequences in your future, and sometimes the consequences can be dramatic. A good exercise for success is to write a description of the kind of person you would like to be, and the kind of life you would like to lead. The most powerful faculty you have is your ability to think. Your ability to understand. The more precisely you can think about who you are, and what you want to achieve, and how to achieve it, the more effective and successful you will be. The tenth law of success is the law of subconscious activity, and it has several applications. The first part of this law is that any thought or idea mixed with emotion that you hold in your conscious mind will be accepted as a command by your subconscious mind. This means that any thought, idea, or goal you can continuously hold in your mind you can achieve because your subconscious mind will work to organize all your thoughts and actions to bring it into your reality. The second part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, once given the proper commands, will activate your reticular activation system. Its function is a brain filter-like part that alerts you to events that are consistent with your desires or dominant emotions. 
For example, if you decide you want to buy a red sports car, this desire would send a signal to your reticular activation system that red sports cars are now of paramount importance to you. From that moment on, you would see red sports cars everywhere, even blocks away. You would become extremely alert and sensitive to red sports cars, as well as to the means to obtain one. If one of your goals is to achieve financial independence, the reticular activation system will make you extremely sensitive to all kinds of opportunities around you that would help you earn more money. The third part of the law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, which controls your autonomic nervous system and all your muscles, nerves, actions, and reactions, also controls your body language and your tone of voice. Professor Moravian of the University of California at Santa Barbara has concluded that when you communicate with others, 55% of the message you send is contained in your body language, 38% of the message is contained in your tone of voice, and only 7% of the message is contained in the actual words you use. And your body language and tone of voice are largely controlled by messages about yourself and your goals that you have sent to your subconscious mind as a result of how you think and feel. For example, when you have had a success of any kind, you send an emotional charge to your subconscious mind that tells it you are a winner. For some time afterward, you will walk, talk, act, and think like a winner. Your step will be more energetic, your voice will be stronger, your eyes will be more focused, and your body language will signify this belief about yourself. Your subconscious mind will accept your predominant emotional thoughts and organize your whole body, voice, and tone to fit a pattern consistent with that. The ninth law of success is the law of expectations, often called the self-fulfilling prophecy law. It is one of the most powerful laws because of its simplicity and predictability. This law simply states that what you confidently expect tends to materialize in your life. You do not get what you want, but what you expect most intensely. For this reason, a positive attitude is critical to great success in all areas of your life. The wonderful thing about the law of expectations is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectations. You can decide to expect only good things to happen to you. You can walk, talk, and act as if you believe that everyone is conspiring to help you achieve your goals. You can become what Clement Stone often called a reverse paranoid. You can convince yourself that everyone is conspiring to do you good. The way you apply the law of expectations is by constantly seeking the good in every person and in every situation. When you have a temporary setback, you can look for the valuable lesson it might contain. Instead of getting angry, you can say to yourself something like, I believe in the perfect outcome of every situation in my life. This type of affirmation makes you approach everything you do with a more positive, open, and optimistic attitude. The most powerful expectations are those you hold for yourself. You should approach everything you do with a calm and confident attitude of expectation. You should expect to succeed more often than not. Expect to win more times than you lose, and expect to eventually reach your goals if you persist long enough. The tenth law of success, which applies to many other areas of life, is called the law of concentration. It states that whatever you focus on and repeatedly think about with emotion, tends to become more and more a part of your internal and external life. The eleventh law of success is the law of habit. It states that virtually everything you do is automatic and unconscious. You are largely a creature of habit. From the moment you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, you tend to follow the path of least resistance and do the things you have become accustomed to in the past. There is nothing wrong with establishing habits that allow you to simplify your life. In fact, your life becomes successful to the extent that many of the things you once needed to concentrate on, like driving a car, have become automatic and unconscious. There are several parts to the law of habit. The first part is that good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. The second part is that bad habits are easy to form, but hard to live with. One of the most difficult changes of all are bad habits that are counterproductive to the goals you wish to achieve. Therefore, it is important for you to sit down and reflect on the habits you have, and carefully analyze them. You need to decide if they are leading you toward your goals, or away from them. The third part of the law of habit is that your mind becomes a slave to your habit. Once you form a habit, your mind becomes accustomed to following that pattern, rather than thinking of new ways to act. That is why it is so important to break bad habits and replace them with positive habits. You can accomplish this by practicing the law of concentration in conjunction with the law of habit and continually thinking about how you would be with a new habit or behavior. 
This sends this message to your subconscious mind, and eventually, you begin to behave in a manner consistent with the new habits you desire. So, my friends, let us carry forth the flame of inspiration ignited within us as we part ways. Let us not forget the profound truth that it is our daily habits, our rituals of excellence, that shape the trajectory of our lives. And it is through the strokes of habit, of unwavering commitment, relentless pursuit of growth, and unyielding determination that we craft our masterpiece. So let us pledge here and now to embrace this habit of empowerment, to nurture it, to cultivate it, until it blooms into fruition. As you depart from this gathering, remember that the journey to greatness begins with a single step, a step towards the cultivation of habits that propel you towards your highest potential. And though the road may be fraught with challenges and obstacles, know that with each stride, you grow stronger, more resilient, more powerful than you ever thought possible. So go forth, embrace the power of habit, and let it guide you to heights beyond your wildest dreams. For in the end, it is not the destination that defines us, but the journey, the journey of self-discovery, of growth, and of transformation. And just this habit, practiced with unwavering commitment and dedication, has the power to make you powerful beyond belief. Until we meet again, may your path be illuminated by the light of possibility, and may you walk it with unwavering resolve, for within you lies the power to shape your destiny, to become the most powerful version of yourself imaginable. Norman Vincent Peale once wrote, When every physical and mental resource is focused, one's power to solve a problem multiplies tremendously. Why are you on the payroll? This is one of the most important questions you'll ever ask and answer throughout your career. If you're not crystal clear about why you're on the payroll and what results you've been hired to accomplish, it's very hard for you to perform at your best, get paid more, and get promoted faster. In its simplest terms, the answer is that you've been hired to get specific results. Each job can be broken down into about five to seven key result areas. These are the results that you absolutely positively have to get to fulfill your responsibilities and make your maximum contribution to your organization. Key result areas are similar to the vital functions of the body. The absence of any one of these vital functions leads to the death of the organism. By the same token, your failure to perform in a critical result area of your work can lead to the end of your job as well. Key results are always central to your work and determine your success or failure in your job. The key result area is something that you must achieve to succeed at your job. It's a task area for which you are completely responsible. If you don't do it, it will not be done by someone else. Once you have determined your key result areas, the second step is to grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 in each of these areas. Where are you strong and where are you weak? Where are you getting excellent results and where are you underperforming? Your weakest key result area sets the height at which you can use all your other skills and abilities. You could be exceptional in 6 out of 7 of your key result areas, but really poor in the 7th, and your poor performance in the 7th area will hold you back and determine how much you achieve with all your other skills. This weakness will act as a drag on your effectiveness, and be a constant source of friction and frustration. One of the major reasons for procrastination and delay in the workplace, is that people avoid jobs and activities in those areas where they have performed poorly in the past. Instead of setting a goal and making a plan to improve in a particular area, most people avoid that area altogether. The reverse of this is that the better you become in a particular skill area, the more motivated you will be to perform that function, the less you will procrastinate, and the more determined you will be to get it finished. Everybody has both strengths and weaknesses. Refuse to rationalize, justify, or defend your areas of weakness. Instead, identify them clearly, set a goal, and make a plan to become very good in each of those areas. Just think, you may be only one critical skill away from top performance in your job. Here's one of the greatest questions you will ever ask and answer. What one skill, if developed and done in an excellent fashion, would have the greatest positive impact on your career? You should use this question to guide your career for the rest of your life. Find out, and then go to work to bring up your performance in this area. If anyone else is excellent at a particular key result area, this is proof that you can become excellent as well, if you decide to. One of the fastest and best ways to stop procrastinating and get more things done faster is for you to become absolutely excellent in your key result areas. This can be as important as anything else you do in your life and career. How can you put these ideas to work immediately? Identify the key result areas of your work. 
Write down the key results you have to achieve to do your job in an excellent fashion. Determine the one key skill that, if done in an excellent manner, would help you the most in your work right now. Make a habit of doing this analysis regularly for the rest of your career. Never stop improving. This decision alone can change your life. The most important thing you can do for your success is to take control of the suggested elements in your environment. Be sure that what you are seeing and listening to is consistent with the goals that you want to achieve. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. You can become an expert in your field by simply listening to educational audio programs as you drive from place to place. Attend seminars given by experts in your field. Take additional courses and learn everything you possibly can from the experts. Ask them questions, write them letters, read their books, read their articles, and listen to people with proven track records in the area in which you want to be successful. It can save you years of work and thousands and thousands of dollars. Have a vision for yourself and a vision for your life. The key to having a vision is to have a dream. They say in the song, you've got to have a dream if you want to make a dream come true and you can fulfill your dreams. All the great movers and shakers throughout history have been dreamers. They've been people with visions. All leaders have vision. What most people do, because of negative experiences, fear of failure and so on, is if they have a vision at all, they tone it down so it's so small and safe that it doesn't turn them on. It doesn't excite them. They wonder why life isn't exciting. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it, which means to have a vision. And even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. Every one of us has had an experience when we were small. We had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. As we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this. We always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So, dream big dreams if you like and focus on results, not activities. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. All peak performers are result-oriented. All losers and underachievers tend to be activity-oriented. They work very hard, sometimes frantically, and sometimes longer hours than you do, but they lose sight of the results. Ben Travato, the strategic thinker, said, The very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. Many of us work very hard to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. Anyone who's ever had employees will tell you that every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. Focus on results. The key question to ask yourself in your working life it's one of the most important key questions, is what results are expected of me. Not what activities, but what results. What outputs am I supposed to produce in my job? I'm going to give you a simple word that you can use for the rest of your career, which will double your income. The word is how. From now on, whenever you have a goal, the only question you ask is how. Whenever you have a problem to solve, the only question you ask is how. If you have an obstacle to overcome, the only question you ask is how. The wonderful thing about the word how is that it triggers ideas. The ideas are all for actions that you can take immediately. When you take those ideas, you start to get feedback, which enables you to correct your course and take even better steps to achieve your goals. So, the average person, when they have a problem, complains and blames other people about the problem. Top people, when they have a problem or goal, they simply say, what? How can I achieve this goal? They try this, and then try that, and try something else. But it never occurs to them that they will not eventually be successful most of the time. The key to success is, first of all, understanding yourself and understanding your world. That takes some time, some study. And the second is effort. You have to work. You have to be willing to make the efforts necessary. You want to become physically fit? If you want to lose weight, there's a lot of work that you have to do. Unfortunately, most people, the bottom 80% of people, are lazy. Actually, there are three types of lazy. They're lazy, very lazy, and bone lazy. One of the greatest problems we have in our society today is lazy people who want the rewards that hardworking people get, and they call the lazy people the average person. They call successful people the millionaires and billionaires, 
without realizing that all of those people started with nothing, and many of them were poor, many of them were immigrants, and it took 20 to 30 years to become financially successful. If you're successful, it's just luck, you know? So therefore, you don't really deserve it. It should be taken from you and given to others. The fact is that it takes tremendous effort for you and me to achieve any kind of success. But the fact is that there's no obstacle standing between you and any goal that you can set for yourself. You just have to learn how to do it. Every single person who is successful today was once a failure. Everyone in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%, and they set very clear goals. They learned specific things and did things differently from the average person, and their life took off like that Mercedes-Benz touching the gas pedal. Their lives changed. Sometimes the absence of one piece of knowledge can hold you back for years. Never allow yourself to be held back because of the absence of a piece of knowledge or a skill. Because all business skills are learnable. All money-making skills are learnable. All success skills are learnable. Everybody who knows them now, at some point, did not know them at all. So, you can learn anything you need to learn. I had a very poor education, so I thought other people were smarter than me. And if other people are smarter than you, it means that you are dumber than they are. Then I thought, well, if they're smarter than me, then they are worth more than I am. But if other people are worth more, then you must be worth less. Now, the feeling of being worthless is the biggest single problem in the world today. The feeling of being not very valuable and not very important, which leads to low self-esteem, negativity, anger, and depression. It leads to giving up, not even trying. It's the biggest problem in the world today. High self-esteem, confidence in yourself, is the greatest blessing. But here's what I found. Nobody is smarter than you. Nobody's better than you. Some people have different talents and abilities. The talents and abilities are spread quite evenly. So, you have more talent and ability than you could use in 100 lifetimes. The essence of all human wisdom is self-knowledge and self-understanding. Understanding who you are and why you think and feel the way you do. Because that foundation is called intrapersonal intelligence. It's really understanding yourself. Understanding your strengths and weaknesses. You'll find that superior people are very honest about themselves. They know that they're not good at certain things. And they're not defensive. They're better at other things. And they're quite proud of it. But if you set peace of mind as your highest goal, you'll probably never make another mistake. If you achieve everything else in the world but do not achieve your own peace of mind, you will consider yourself a failure. So, you have to keep asking yourself, what are the things that occur that give me peace of mind? When do I enjoy the highest level of peace of mind? When you have no fear and no negative emotions, your mind is like a vacuum. When you have solved all your problems and everything is fine, you just feel completely at peace. Those are what I call the peak experiences of your life. Those are when you are the happiest of all. There are countless stories of individuals who have risen from the ashes of adversity, transforming their lives in ways that seem almost magical. One such story is about a person not unlike you and me, someone who faced the challenges that life threw their way with courage and resilience. This person, let's call them Jordan, was once caught in the grip of despair. Their dreams seemed out of reach, their goals blurred by the fog of doubt. Jordan's turning point came from an unexpected source. A simple realization that the mind, the very tool we all possess, holds the power to change our reality. This realization dawned on Jordan during a time of profound difficulty, a moment when all seemed lost. But it was then that Jordan discovered the profound truth that our thoughts shape our destiny. You see, Jordan had always dreamt of achieving great success, of reaching heights that many believed were unattainable. Yet it was not until they truly understood the power of their own mind that these dreams began to materialize. The mind, as Jordan learned, is akin to a fertile garden. It will grow whatever we decide to plant in it. Negative thoughts will yield a harvest of failure and disappointment, while positive focused thoughts will lead to success and fulfillment. This principle, simple yet profound, is the cornerstone upon which all great achievements are built. It is the foundation that supports the towering structures of success we admire in the world's most accomplished individuals. The key, Jordan realized, lies in the relentless control and direction of one's thoughts. Just as a skilled gardener tends to their garden, removing weeds and nurturing the plants, so too must we tend to the garden of our mind. We must weed out negativity, doubt, and fear, 
and instead nurture thoughts of hope, determination, and success. This journey of mind control is not an easy one. It requires diligence, patience, and an unwavering belief in one's own capabilities. But the rewards it brings are immeasurable. By mastering the art of controlling our thoughts, we unlock the door to limitless potential. We become the architects of our own destiny, capable of building a life that aligns with our highest aspirations. Jordan's story is a testament to the transformative power of the mind. Once plagued by doubt and fear, they are now a beacon of success, living proof that by controlling our thoughts, we can indeed control our destiny. This, my friends, is the first step on the path to achieving any form of success. It is the realization that our destiny is not predetermined by external circumstances, but shaped by the thoughts we choose to harbor within our minds. Take inspiration from Jordan's journey. Recognize the immense power that lies within us, and commit to mastering our thoughts. For in doing so, we embark on a path that leads not just to success, but to a life of meaning, purpose, and fulfillment. This is the beginning, the first step on our journey towards controlling our mind, and unlocking our full potential. As we step forward from understanding the power of controlling our thoughts, navigating through the realms of self-belief and vision, crucial elements that act as the rudder and compass in our journey through life. In the grand narrative of achievements and triumphs, there are countless stories that sing the praises of self-belief. Consider the tale of a young athlete whose dreams towered higher than the peaks they aspired to conquer in the world of professional sports. Despite a modest background and limited resources, this athlete harbored an unwavering belief in their potential. This wasn't just optimism, it was a deep-seated conviction that they were destined for greatness. Each morning as they trained, they visualized not just the sweat and the toil, but the triumph and the accolades. The path was fraught with setbacks, injuries and naysayers who whispered words of doubt. Yet it was the athlete's unshakable self-belief that transformed these obstacles into stepping stones, each one bringing them closer to their goal. This story isn't unique to the world of sports. It echoes through the corridors of businesses, the studios of artists, and the offices of inventors. Each story is a testament to the fact that self-belief is not just about having confidence, it's about shaping the reality around us. When we harbor belief in our capabilities, we set in motion a series of events that align with our inner convictions. It's as though the universe conspires to turn our beliefs into reality. Yet self-belief, on its own as powerful as it is, needs direction, a vision. Imagine embarking on a voyage without a map or a destination in mind. The journey, driven by the winds of casual enthusiasm, might offer scenic views. But where does it lead? This is where the importance of having a clear vision for your life comes into play. A vision acts as a mental blueprint, a map that guides us through the fog of uncertainty and the storms of adversity. It's about knowing not just what we want to achieve, but why we want to achieve it. The significance of vision in shaping our reality cannot be overstated. There was once a visionary who dreamed of touching the stars. While others looked up at the night sky and saw distant lights, this person saw destinations. The journey from dreaming under the starlit sky to launching the first humans into space was paved with challenges that seemed insurmountable. Yet it was the clarity of vision that turned the impossible into history. Your vision for your life is the canvas on which you paint your dreams. It requires precision, clarity, and most importantly, belief in its possibility. The process of creating this vision might require you to look inward, to ask yourself hard questions about what you truly desire from life. It might lead you to discover passions you never knew you had, or it might reaffirm the path you're currently on. Regardless, the clarity of your vision will become the light that guides you through the darkest nights. Realize for yourself that self-confidence and vision are not just abstract concepts. They are the essence of our potential. They are the tools with which we map our destiny proving doubt and revealing the masterpiece that lies within each of us. Let this be the moment where you commit to not only believing in yourself, but creating a vision so vivid, so compelling that it becomes your reality. As we move from realizing the power within our thoughts to strengthening our self-confidence and clarifying our vision, we set out on a journey beyond the ordinary, one full of possibility and promise. It leads to the future. As we navigate through the seas of self-belief and the clarity of our vision, we encounter waves that threaten to steer us off course. These waves, the negative thoughts and self-talk that often besiege our minds, 
are potent forces that can undermine our journey toward achieving our dreams. But fear not, for just as every skilled navigator knows how to steer their ship through stormy seas, so too can we learn to master the art of combating these negative intrusions, ensuring they do not dictate the direction of our lives. Imagine for a moment walking through a dense forest where the light struggles to penetrate the thick canopy above. This forest is akin to our mind, cluttered with negative thoughts, dark, confusing, and difficult to navigate. The first step in finding our way out is to recognize that we are indeed in this forest. Recognizing negative self-talk is akin to finding a compass in our pocket. Suddenly, we have a tool that can help guide us out. It begins with awareness, with listening to the whispers of doubt and fear without judgment, acknowledging their presence but not their power over us. Having recognized these negative patterns, the task then becomes one of combating them, of actively choosing not to follow the paths they lay before us. One powerful technique in this battle is the use of affirmations, positive, empowering statements that we can tell ourselves to drown out the cacophony of negativity. Like seeds of light in the dense forest, these affirmations have the power to illuminate our path, showing us the way forward, to reinforce our belief in our capabilities, in our worth, and in the inevitability of our success. Yet affirmations alone, much like a single beam of light, might not be enough to clear the forest. This is where positive visualization comes into play. Visualization is not merely about seeing the destination, but about feeling the journey. About experiencing the joy, the pride, and the fulfillment of achieving our goals even before they have been realized. It's about walking through the forest in our mind's eye, and seeing it not as a place of darkness, but as a space of potential, a reminder of the strength and resilience that lie within us. Consider the story of a musician plagued by doubts about their talent, their future, and their worth. Each time they stepped onto the stage, the forest of their mind grew denser, filled with the menacing shadows of failure and rejection. But through the practice of affirmations, they began to see glimmers of light, paths that led them away from fear and toward confidence. With each positive statement, the light grew stronger, the paths clearer, and through visualization, they began to experience the warmth of the spotlight, not as a beacon of exposure, but as a spotlight of triumph, feeling the applause, the joy, and the satisfaction of performance even in the quiet of their room. This transformation did not happen overnight. It required consistency, patience, and belief in the process. But as the musician continued to combat their negative self-talk with affirmations and visualization, the forest began to thin. Where there was once only darkness, there was now light. Where there was once confusion, there was now direction. The musician's performances transformed, reflecting the newfound confidence and positivity that had taken root within their mind. Understanding that overcoming negative thoughts is not just about silencing them, but about changing the conversation in our minds. It's about recognizing the power we have to illuminate the dark forests with the light of our positivity and vision. By practicing affirmations and positive visualization, we equip ourselves with the tools not only to navigate the forest, but to transform it, to see it not as a barrier to our success, but as a testament to our strength and resilience. As we move from the shores of self-belief and vision into the forest of our negative thoughts, let us do so with the confidence that we have the power to chart our course, to transform the terrain of our minds, and to emerge into the clearing stronger, more focused, and ever closer to realizing our dreams. The journey through the forest is a part of the path to our goals, a segment of our voyage that tests our resolve and shapes us into the individuals capable of achieving greatness. When we've combed the shadows of negative self-talk with the bright lanterns of affirmations and positive visualization, we now stand at the foot of a mountain. This mountain represents our goals, the summits of our ambitions and dreams. Setting clear, achievable goals is not merely an act of wishful thinking. It is a disciplined mental exercise, a deliberate carving of steps into the mountainside, ensuring that each one leads us closer to the peak of our success. The art of goal-setting is akin to plotting a course on a map before embarking on a journey. It involves identifying not just our destination but the waypoints along the path. These waypoints or goals must be clear enough to guide us yet flexible enough to adapt to the unforeseen challenges that the journey may present. They must be achievable, providing us with a sense of progress as we conquer each one, and yet ambitious enough to stretch us beyond our comfort zones into realms of potential we've yet to explore. 
Imagine, if you will, the story of a writer who dreamt of penning a novel that would touch the hearts of millions. This dream, lofty and daunting, could have remained a mere figment of imagination had it not been for the writer's commitment to setting clear, tangible goals. The first goal was as simple as writing a single page a day. This small step, seemingly insignificant in the grand scheme, was the first stone laid on the path to the writer's success. With each page, the writer built confidence, honed their craft, and moved closer to their dream. The journey was fraught with rejection and criticism, but the clarity of the writer's goals served as a beacon, guiding them through moments of doubt and despair. Yet what truly distinguishes those who reach the summits of their ambitions from those who remain in the valleys of intention is persistence and resilience. The path to our goals is seldom linear. It is a climb that tests our endurance, our will, and our belief in ourselves. History is replete with tales of individuals whose journeys were marked by failure, yet who are celebrated not for their falls, but for their rises. Consider the inventor whose early creations were met with mockery and dismissal. With each failed prototype, the inventor faced a choice. To abandon their work, or to persevere. It was their persistence, the refusal to see failure as a final verdict, that ultimately led to a breakthrough invention that changed the world. In each failed attempt, the inventor found valuable lessons, refining their vision, their approach, until success was finally achieved. Or take the athlete whose early career was punctuated by losses that would have crushed a lesser spirit. It was their resilience, their unwavering commitment to training and improvement, that transformed them from a contender to a champion. In the face of defeat, the athlete saw not an end point, but a stepping stone, an opportunity to grow stronger and more skilled. These stories, and countless others, illustrate the transformative power of persistence and resilience. They remind us that success is not the absence of failure, but the ability to rise each time we fall. They underscore the importance of setting goals not as distant dreams, but as immediate actionable steps that propel us forward day by day toward the heights we aspire to reach. The knowledge that the goals we set are the beacons that light our way, and our persistence and resilience are the winds in our sails. Embrace the climb knowing that each step brings us closer to our summit, and remember that the greatest triumphs are often born from the greatest trials. In the dance of shadows and light, of falls and rises, lies the path to our greatest achievements. And it is along this path, through the act of setting goals and persisting against all odds, that we truly discover the depth of our strength and the boundlessness of our potential. Fueled by persistence and resilience, we reach a plateau that offers a vantage point not just of the path we've traversed, but also of the uncharted territories that lie ahead. This vista represents the ever-expanding landscape of knowledge, and the principle of embracing lifelong learning. The journey of self-improvement and success does not culminate at the summit of one mountain, but rather extends across a range of peaks, each offering new challenges and opportunities. The key to navigating this terrain lies in cultivating a mental attitude of lifelong learning. Imagine walking through a vast library, one that stretches beyond the horizon, its shelves laden with the wisdom of the ages. This library is a metaphor for the world around us, rich with knowledge waiting to be discovered. To enter this library with the conviction that we already possess all the knowledge we need is to deny ourselves the wealth of understanding and insight that lies within its walls. Conversely, approaching each book, each experience and each conversation with a mindset of curiosity and a thirst for learning opens up a world of possibilities. The mental attitude of being a lifelong learner is characterized by an insatiable curiosity, an openness to new ideas, and a humble acknowledgement that no matter how much we know, there is always more to learn. It's about seeing every experience, whether success or failure, as a lesson in disguise, an opportunity to grow and expand our understanding. This attitude transforms the way we approach challenges and opportunities alike, preparing us to face the unexpected with confidence and agility. Consider the story of a scientist whose research hit a dead end, their experiments yielding nothing but failure. Instead of viewing these failures as a sign to give up, the scientists saw them as puzzles to be solved, questions to be answered. This perspective, rooted in a commitment to lifelong learning, eventually led to a breakthrough discovery that changed the course of their field. The scientist's journey underscores the power of curiosity and the willingness to embrace the unknown as pathways to innovation and success. Similarly, think of an entrepreneur who, in the face of a rapidly changing market, chose to dive into the unfamiliar world of digital technology. 
By adopting the mindset of a lifelong learner, the entrepreneur was able to pivot their business, adapting to new trends and technologies that initially seemed daunting. This willingness to learn and grow not only saved their business, but also propelled it to new heights, illustrating how a commitment to continuous learning can turn challenges into opportunities. Embracing lifelong learning also means stepping out of our comfort zones and seeking knowledge in diverse fields and disciplines. It's about understanding that the solutions to tomorrow's problems may lie in the lessons of history, the theories of economics, the innovations of science, or the creativity of art. This holistic approach to learning enriches our perspective, equipping us with a broad toolkit to navigate the complexities of life and work. The philosophy of lifelong learning, approached with zeal, means to approach each day with the curiosity of a child, eager to discover, question, and understand. Remember that the landscape of knowledge is vast and ever-changing, and that our capacity to learn and adapt is one of our greatest strengths. In doing so, we not only prepare ourselves for the unexpected twists in our personal and professional lives, but also cultivate a mindset that thrives on change and embraces growth. This commitment to lifelong learning becomes our compass, guiding us through the challenges ahead and illuminating our path to success. Having navigated through the dense forests of negative thoughts and scaled the heights of goal setting, we find ourselves at a crucial juncture. Here, the path widens into a field where the seeds of discipline and focus must be sown and nurtured. Cultivating these qualities is akin to tending to a garden. It requires patient care and the consistent application of effective strategies to yield the fruits of success. Discipline is the bedrock upon which the edifice of achievement is built. It is the inner strength that enables us to make decisions aligned with our long-term goals, even when they are at odds with our immediate desires. This mental discipline does not develop overnight. Rather, it is the result of a deliberate and conscious effort to exercise control over our thoughts and actions. One effective strategy for enhancing mental discipline is the practice of setting small daily challenges for ourselves. These challenges, though seemingly inconsequential, serve as exercises in self-control, strengthening our ability to stay committed to our larger goals. Consider, for example, the discipline required to rise early each morning. This simple act of setting the alarm clock a few minutes earlier than usual and resisting the temptation to hit the snooze button is a powerful exercise in self-discipline. It sends a clear message to our subconscious that we are in control, that we are capable of making choices that serve our higher objectives. Over time, this daily practice not only becomes a habit, but also reinforces our sense of mastery over our environment and ourselves. Focus, on the other hand, is the lens through which we concentrate and direct our efforts toward our goals. In a world brimming with distractions, maintaining focus requires us to be vigilant guardians of our attention. One strategy for improving focus is the cultivation of mindfulness, the art of being fully present in the moment. By practicing mindfulness, we train our minds to remain anchored in the present task, undisturbed by the ebb and flow of external distractions or the undercurrents of internal chatter. The role of habits and routines in this context cannot be overstated. Habits are the threads from which the fabric of our daily lives is woven. They are the automatic responses that guide much of our behavior, freeing our minds to focus on higher-order thinking and creativity. By establishing routines aligned with our goals, we embed our aspirations into the very structure of our day-to-day -day existence. These routines act as guardrails, keeping us on the path toward our objectives even when our motivation wanes or attention wavers. Imagine the writer who dedicates the first hour of each day to writing, the entrepreneur who begins each morning with a review of their goals, or the athlete who ends each day with a reflection on their training. These rituals, repeated day after day, become the scaffolding upon which their success is built. They create a rhythm to our lives, a steady beat that guides us through the chaos and complexity of the world. The cultivation of discipline and focus, viewed not as burdens but as liberators, enables us to carve out a space for our dreams in the fabric of reality. Through the consistent application of strategies to enhance mental discipline, and by fostering habits and routines that support our focus, we lay the groundwork for a life of purpose, achievement, and fulfillment. So, as we stride forward from the fertile grounds of lifelong learning, let us plant the seeds of discipline and focus in the garden of our minds. Let us tend to these seeds with care, watering them with the practices of mindfulness, the challenges of daily self-discipline, and the rhythms of supportive routines. 
In doing so, we prepare ourselves not just to face the unexpected challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, but to embrace them with confidence, knowing that we possess the inner resources to navigate any storm and reach the shores of our most cherished goals. The landscape of our own potential, navigating the valleys of doubt and climbing the peaks of ambition, reveals that the most profound tool at our disposal is the power of the mind. Our voyage has taken us from recognizing the destructive force of negative thoughts to the construction of robust pillars of goals and persistence, all underpinned by the bedrock of discipline and focus. Each step has revealed more of the map that guides us to success, a map etched in the very fabric of our thoughts and beliefs. We began by understanding that controlling our mind is akin to mastering the winds that fill the sails of our lives. Like seasoned sailors, we learn to harness these winds, directing our thoughts towards the shores of positivity and achievement. This mastery is not just about averting the gaze from negativity, but about actively charting a course through the waters of our deepest fears and highest hopes. The power of self-belief and vision then emerged as our compass, guiding us through the fog of uncertainty. With each story of triumph, each anecdote of resilience, we saw the beacon of our own potential shining brighter, urging us to set our sights on horizons that once seemed beyond our reach. This vision, clear and unwavering, became the star by which we navigated, turning the vastness of our dreams into the reality of our daily lives. Yet the journey revealed that even the strongest of visions can falter in the face of negative thoughts. Like insidious whisperers, they sought to veer us off course. But armed with the tools of affirmations and positive visualization, we learned to silence these doubts through persistent practice. We transformed our inner dialogue, crafting a narrative of success that echoed through the chambers of our minds, empowering and uplifting us. Our expedition then took us to the realm of goals and persistence, where the importance of setting clear, achievable objectives became as evident as the need for the resilience to pursue them. Here, we found that success is not a destination, but a journey marked by the milestones of our perseverance and the footprints of our endurance. The tales of those who overcame failure with mental strength illuminated our path, serving as a reminder that the only true defeat lies in the abandonment of our quest. Embracing lifelong learning then broadened our horizons, instilling in us a curiosity that knows no bounds. This curiosity, fueled by an insatiable thirst for knowledge, prepared us for the unexpected turning challenges into opportunities for growth and self-discovery. It reminded us that the journey of success is one of continuous evolution, where the acquisition of wisdom is both the journey and the reward. As we cultivated discipline and focus, we understood that these qualities are the guardians of our destiny, ensuring that the treasures of our potential are not lost to the sands of procrastination or the tides of distraction. By nurturing habits and routines that align with our goals, we forge a shield against the vagaries of circumstance, ensuring that our efforts are both deliberate and directed. Now, as we stand at the culmination of our journey, let us take a moment to reflect on the transformative power of controlling our minds. This power is not an arcane secret, nor is it the privilege of the few. It is a fundamental truth accessible to all who dare to wield it. The mastery of our thoughts, the cultivation of our beliefs, and the discipline of our actions are the instruments through which we can sculpt the masterpiece of our lives. So let this be our call to action, to seize the reins of our thoughts, to steer our minds with the precision of a master craftsman, and to embrace the limitless potential that lies within. Let us commit to a future where our dreams are not mere figments of our imagination, but the foundations of the reality we build each day. The journey does not end here. It merely takes on new dimensions, exploring uncharted territories of our potential. With each step, let us reaffirm our commitment to excellence, to growth, and to the relentless pursuit of success. For in the mastery of our minds lies the key to unlocking the boundless expanse of our capabilities. Move forward with courage, with conviction, and with the unwavering belief that our greatest achievements lie not behind us, but ahead, waiting to be realized.